What's good, YouTube? Okay, cool. So today I wanted to talk about warping, or warping specifically in FL Studio. Now, if you're not familiar with the term warping, warping is a technique that you can use to correct timing issues. So if you're someone that uses you know, a lot of drum loops, some old samples, you may find that depending on how it's been recorded or depending on how the, the loop has been put together, there may be some obvious timing issues. Now, to save yourself the aggro of, you know, putting it into um, some sort of drum program, chopping up the different samples and then arranging them yourself, you can use a feature called Warping. If FL Studio happens to be your DAW of choice, it's not a feature that's available within the DAW itself. You need to use a plugin that's also made by ImageLine. It's called Newtone, which we'll cover in a second. But you know, warping is it's really, really simple to do once you know how to do it. Uh, granted, it's not as intuitive as Pro Tools or Ableton because their warping features are built directly into the DAW. But uh, as soon as you know where it is in FL, it's really easy to use. It probably doesn't help that the option is hidden inside New Tone, which I will show you in a second. The idea for this video came off of a song I was mixing recently. So the song uses some Marvin Gaye samples and I'm going to be demonstrating a horn sequence, performance, should we say, a horn performance that's one bar long. The beat or the actual song that's been created using these samples is it's quite a tight hip hop song, whereas the, the horns are quite soulful, they're quite jazzy. And I imagine that a time signature is probably not the same. It's probably not 4-4, it's probably 3-4 or something along those lines. And the it sounds to me like the horns are a little off. Purpose of warping for this scenario is that I wanted the horns to be just a bit tighter to the grid. So kind of think quantized drums in some respects, uh, but trying to not make it sound robotic. You want, you want to still retain the human feel, but uh, actually having it a bit more sequenced to the, the new song that the sample has been used for. Okay, so on screen, the left hand sample is the original horns and the right hand side is the warped horns. So I'm just going to play them back for you now. So the obvious thing when you listen back to the two samples is that the one on the right is faster, or at least it appears faster. Um, I didn't do any tempo manipulation inside New Tone. I just moved the transients around so they fit on the grid and kind of matched up with the new song that I was making and mixing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up New Tone and we're going to kind of repeat what I'd done. Not exactly because this wasn't a simple loop to change. But if you're just doing some, you know, some dry drum loops, it's really simple. But I wanted because this is this is something that's happening right now. I'm mixing this song right now. I wanted to kind of, I guess, show you, show you it. Cool. Okay. Load up a copy of Newtone. Alrighty. Once Newtone loads up, you're presented with this gorgeous-looking navy, depressing screen. And there are two modes within Newtone. So the first mode is the default, obviously, and it's kind of the the mode that ImageLion market this this plugin, and it's marketed as a pitch correction software. So if I drag and drop the horns, you'll see that Newtone has analyzed the sample. It's detected all the different notes, and then from here you can make uh, a number of different changes. Whether you want to change the note itself, whether you want to change the vibrato, the pitch, you know, all the usual note manipulation options you can do. And uh, there are similar plugins like Melodyne and Autotune that, that do these things as well. But I'm not going to go into too much detail on that because we're more focused on the warping side. So as I mentioned, there are two modes. Now to get to this mode, it's not that obvious, which is probably the reason why not many people know how to do warping inside FL Studio. If you see up here, there is a floppy disk looking icon, which you know, to the naked eye, you would kind of see that as a way to save the sample. But there is actually an option to change the, the mode. So we want to change to Time Warping. To do that, you're presented with the same blank canvas as you do when you open the plugin. What we want to do now is if we just drag across the sample, 
it automatically slices the sample depending on the RID settings or the snap settings that you have. So Newtone has very similar options that you would expect to see in the playlist or in the piano roll, such as quantizing, changing the grid settings, as I mentioned. And you can get to those options via the menus up here. Now, anyone will tell you that you need to listen. Your ears are always your best tool when it comes to doing anything music related. But if we use our eyes in the first instance, we can see that here's a grid line. Here's another grid line and the transients don't fall exactly on the grid lines. So if we just play this back. So very quickly, we can just literally left click, left click, and then it has snapped the transients to the grid. Now let's play that back. Oh. Now, that to me doesn't really sound right. I mean, the primary uses for this will be to correct drum loops, which is really simple. But when you're using uh, samples that, particularly if you're sampling a song from a genre that's not using a kind of traditional four x four time signature, which you'll get from, you know, regular commercial music, then dragging transients onto the grid isn't necessarily gonna work on all occasions. So this is where I go back to my original point where, you know, just because these transits are snaps to the grid, if you listen to it, it doesn't sound right. So always go by what sounds right. Now to me, this sounds wrong. So what I would do and what I did do is I went and changed the snap settings. So from here, we will just go to snap to grid. So at the moment it's snapped onto beat, which is yeah, it's quite conservative, but we can definitely get more granular. So I personally would probably go to maybe a fourth, fourth of beat. And then if we zoom in using alt and, and scroll, you can then start playing around with it a bit more. You know, you've got that one there. Maybe that one wants to go back. I just, to be honest, just experiment. The bottom line is, if it sounds good, then you're onto a winner. So have a play around with it and kind of see where you get with it. But, um, you know, without making this video too long and too in-depth, this is pretty much what warping is. I could have given you an easier example, just use some drum loops, but I figured, you know, this is something that's live. This is something I'm doing right now. And I just wanted to make a quick video on it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I hope it helps. I hope to give you uh, a little insight into warping and, and it's a very good technique to use instead of having to, you know, tear up a loop and um, probably destroying it in the, in the process. But yeah, as usual, be sure to, to like, comment, and subscribe, and check back on my channel next Sunday for more videos. Peace.